ourselves, hands together, and give God some glory. Amen. Amen. Glory to God. Good to see you. Good to see all of you. Wow. Y'all clapping for real. Wow. Okay. Okay. <laughs> Praise the Lord. Y'all must be really blessed today. Amen. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Listen, just look at somebody and say, I speak an extra $100 in your life. Just tell them, I speak an extra $100. Yeah, I speak an extra 100 Yeah, extra $100 in your life. It, it's on the way. I receive it. I said, extra 100 Everybody can use an extra 100 Amen. <laughs> I use an extra 100 Praise the Lord. Y'all excited. Y'all excited. Glory to God. Amen. You watch when they show up, y'all tell your neighbor, I got it, I got it. <laughs> Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much, Lord. God, thank you for laughter. Just thank you for the joy, um, your joy that is our strength. And Father, we honor you tonight. Father, we pray uh, for this moment, this teaching moment. Lord God, we pray that you would use this moment for your glory. Father, be edified and be glorified tonight. Lord, we thank you for your divine protection, your divine provision, God, your divine instruction and inspiration, God, that you continue, continue to pour out upon us. We pray, God, for our teachers in our children's church, our teacher, teachers in our uh, children, teen ministry. Father, we just pray that the same anointing that we experience here, God, that they will experience where they are. Father, we thank you for the ones who are watching online. We thank you for uh, COP Nation, those that are watching all over the world. We pray your blessing over each of us. Father, do with this, t do with this night, Lord God. Uh, only what you can do, prepare our hearts to hear what you are saying to this church. Father, we pray that you would move tonight by your spirit, by your power. Have your way, God. Destroy yokes. Arrest anything that's not like you, Lord God. Have your way in this place tonight. God, be glorified in Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Amen and amen. God bless each of you. Um, thank you for being here. Those of you who are online, we honor God for you, wherever you're watching from, and, uh, and we thank you. Uh, grab your pen, paper, notebook, uh, notes page on your mobile device, whatever you are uh, using to take notes tonight. I pray that you came to, uh, to hear from the Lord and hear what God is saying to the church. Uh, I am uh, so honored and happy to be uh, the pastor of church on purpose. I'm so just so happy. I'm so so I'm so happy to see the things that God is doing uh, in this ministry. How God is growing the ministry. How God is growing you. How many of you feel like you're growing spiritually as a result of being here? Amen. I'm glad glad to hear that. I, I want you to grow. I want you to grow spiritually. I want you to hear the word. And I try to I do my best to teach the word in such a way that you can receive it, that you can get it, that you can hear it. Um, and so that it helps moves us to move us to that next place in him. Now, um, um, what is my title for tonight? Y'all yellow, what's my title for tonight? Stopping what? Stopping the three rogue spirits. Stopping the three rogue spirits. This is part number two. So uh, for those of you who were here last week, you got part number one. If you were not here, I do encourage you to go to our YouTube page, um, Church on Purpose. Just go to YouTube and type, type in Church on Purpose, and I want you to go, and I want you to watch last week's teaching. Uh, I don't have enough time to go back in detail and deal with all the things that, that we've dealt with uh, last week, but I want you to go back and watch that. That's, last week is one of those teachings that, that you want to keep. You want to you wanna keep listening to because um, as our church grows, it becomes a bigger target. Amen? Let me say it like this. The, the greater anointing you carry, the greater target you become for the enemy. Does that make sense? Yeah, so when, when, you start, when you start growing and developing, you just got to know that um, you're going to have attacks and different weird things happen in your life. But the Bible tells us uh, not to think it's strange when those things happen to us, as if some strange thing has happened. Um, but you got to know that, that the, the higher you go, you become, a greater, uh, you become a greater threat to the enemy. Now, we're not to be afraid of that. God never told us to be afraid of that because he says, I give you authority. Everybody say, I have authority. 
He said, I gave you authority over serpents, scorpions, and all the power of the enemy, and nothing shall by any means hurt you. You got to know that. In other words, that the hurt is a permanent hurt. In other words, so, so um, if, if something does get near you and something, something does happen, you got to know that, that it won't prosper. Everybody say it won't prosper. Good job. You guys need to know that. Now, so we talked about the three rogue spirits. When you look up the word rogue, one of the, one of the animals that they use in conjunction with the word rogue is an elephant. Everybody say elephant. Yeah. Although I like elephants, but elephants can be a dangerous animal. Um, as long as elephants in the wild, it doesn't bother me. If an elephant was in this church, we'd have some problems. Amen? We'd have some problems. So put the elephant up there. So, so, um, so we, we have a... I just want y'all to see that picture. If that elephant was running loose in this building, right uh, in this room right now, would your posture change? Yeah. She said her placement <laughs> would change. I think that's true for all of us. I think it's true for all of us. Now, um, there are spirits. So, so imagine the destruction that elephant could do uh, with all, if it got up on the stage and tore up all the sound system, tore up all the, the monitors, and tore up all the chairs. Imagine the destruction that it would do if it was just a loose in this building and it was angry. Now, I need you to keep that picture in your mind as we talk about the three rogue spirits, because there, there are rogue spirits that are doing that damage in the spirit realm that are tearing up spiritual lives and spiritual houses. There's, there, there are three rogue spirits in particular that's doing that type of damage. We're going to talk about them. I'm going to teach you how to identify them. I'm going to teach you how to deal with them. So when, so when you see those spirits come up, you recognize, wait a minute, I see what you're doing. I see what I see. You're trying to you're trying to destroy the ministry. You're trying to destroy this person, or what for whatever reason you're trying to destroy them. And I see it happening. I'm going to teach you how to call that down. Teach you how to deal with that. All right, um, those rogue spirits. Now, what were the three rogue spirits? Those last week, what's my class? Three, what, three rogue. What are, who are they? Absalom, Korah, and Jezebel. Who are the three rogue spirits? Absalom, Korah. Jezebel, now that, that, that's a good class. What's up, class? What's three rogues? Y'all be quiet. Three rogue spirits? Absalom, Korah, Jezebel. Okay, y'all got it. Okay, okay. <laughs> y'all got it. All right. All right. So, so we're going we're gonna to talk about them. We're going to talk about them. Now, so I'm going to go pretty fast. Uh, yeah, my timer's now. I want to get my timer up. So I'm going to go pretty fast through this, um, through the first part, so we can get to the second part. Go to 2 Samuel chapter 15, real quick. 2 Samuel chapter 15. Let's go, let's go, let's go pretty quick. Second Samuel. Give me, give me 40, 45 minutes on that, on that uh, timer. Second Samuel. Chapter 15. Again, we're gonna move, we're gonna move pretty quick. So uh, keep those Bibles, keep those Bibles open, because we're gonna be rolling. Um, look at verse number four. Second Samuel chapter 15, verses four through six. And Absalom would add. If only I, everybody say, if only I, if only I were appointed judge in the land, then everyone who had a complaint or case could come to me and I would see that they received justice, so forth and so on. So Absalom, Absalom was, was uh, David's son. I don't have time to deal with that. Go back and study that a little bit or go back and listen to last, last week's teaching. Um, and Absalom would stand at the gate of the city. And as people would come to see the king, Absalom would say, hey, uh, what are y'all doing here? They said, we came to see the king. Oh, really? Oh, man, what, what happened? Tell me about what happened. They would say, yeah, this happened and that happened. And then Absalom was like, man, you know, the king, he'd be real busy, bro, for real. Like, king be talking to everybody. Like, I don't know how y'all going to have time to talk to him. Then, then Absalom, would, he, would, he would say, yo, if I was a judge, man, you know what I'm saying? If I was a judge, I'd go ahead and judge it right now. You know what I'm saying? I'll go ahead and deal with that, and I'll go ahead and see how long you're Y'all don't even have to go in there and, you know, wait on the king in that long line and see the king, and I'll go, ahead and, I'll go ahead and take care of it. And everybody was like, you know, that's a good idea. And so, you know, after that, he would dap them up, man, and he would hug them, and he would kiss them on the cheek, and he was like, yo, man, look, y'all ever need anything, I got you, fam. You know what I'm saying? Y'all can go in and talk to the king, wait in that line, but you know what I'm saying? I don't have no line. <laughs> and, and so, and so what, what, what happened was he, he won the heart of the people. And then he led a revolt. He led a revolt against King David. Actually, he ran King David off of his own throne, out of his own kingdom, because David was afraid that Absalom and the, and the, and the people that had started working with him, he was afraid that they were going to kill him. 
Okay, now, um, Absalom, here's, here's an Absalom spirit. So whenever you hear people say this, especially toward leadership, especially toward leadership, you'll know that that's the wrong spirit. If they say things like, I can do it better. The Absalom spirit say, you know what, I can do it better. And you got to be careful, especially when, when, when you can do the same thing that someone else is doing. Because it's easy to look at them and judge them and say, I, I, you, know, you know, people are funny. It's like, it's like if somebody come in and decorate. I, I've seen it happen a lot of times. We'll have somebody come in and decorate the stage or decorate the church for, for Christmas or an event or something like that. And somebody else who's a decorator come in and say, mm, I wouldn't have done that. Why they why they put that on how they put that on the stage? I don't know, you know. And so instead of just coming in and saying, you know what, that, that it doesn't matter, it's just stuff. And just worshiping the Lord. Sometimes we can come and look at the same thing, and then if we're not careful, you'll you'll start judging, you'll start talking it down, and then you'll cause other people to try to see the see it the way you see it. Preachers have to be careful. Because you'll look at somebody um, and you'll say, you'll see somebody else preaching, and maybe they didn't do it the way, didn't say it the way you would say it. And it's easy to say, you know what, I wouldn't have said that like that. Well, I'm, of course you wouldn't. You're not the one who said it. <laughs> They're the one who said it. Okay, that's Absalom spirit. Um, um, I would have done it different. I would have done it different. Or they say, if I was in leadership. Whenever you hear people talking like that, if I, uh, I would have, I would have done it differently. Um, so the Absalom spirit works through the people. So, so, so look down your row and say, is Absalom on this row somewhere? Is he? Yeah. Oh, okay, all right, yeah, because, because, <laughs> because Absalom, <laughs> Absalom's spirit works through the people. It works through the people. It tries to get the people on its side, tries to get the people, it, it, in, other, in other words, the Absalom spirit exalts itself. It tries to make itself better than the next person, or better than the leader, or better than the next person. It tries to exalt itself, um, um, and, and did, did y'all, you know, y'all, this was, Listen to this. This is, this is going to mess y'all up. Absalom was David's son, right? Do you know what the name Absalom means? You ever thought about that? What the name Absalom means? You ever, you ever, did you know that? Anybody know the name Absalom? Listen, the, the name Absalom means my father is peace. <laughs> so... Instead of being peace for his dad, he made war for his father. Isn't that something? Isn't that something? In other words, in other words, in other words, God sent you here to help bring peace to a ministry. But there are times, there are times if we're not careful, instead of bringing peace, We'll bring war or division or bickering or, or griping. We'll bring that to the ministry. And so, and so what do we got to do? We've got, we've, got to, we've got to be mindful of that as we grow um, so that we can weed out those things. How many of y'all are from the country? Y'all from the country? Oh, wow. A lot of y'all are from the country. Okay, 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 okay. Um, how, many of y'all, how many of y'all raised the garden? You raised the garden. You know how to raise the garden. Okay, a few, few, a few fewer hands. Okay. Now, now listen, now listen, now check this out, now check this out, now check this out. No matter, no matter, when you first plant your garden and you first till the ground and you first put your seeds in the ground, I mean, your garden looks beautiful. There's not a weed in sight. It looks beautiful. I mean, you got the fertilizer in the ground, you're, you're watering it, and then you start seeing a sprout. But, 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 but what happens? What grows up along with that wonderful seed that you planted. Wait a minute. How often does it happen? You mean to tell me that every time you plant a garden, weeds grow up every time? you got to be kidding me. I wonder if the same principle is true every time you plant a church. I wonder if weedy people <laughs> That's why the Bible says let the wheat and the tare let it grow together. 
And I'm separate. No, 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 no. Now, here's a bit of a part. If you really know about gardening, what do you do when you see the weeds growing up? You do what? You do what? You, you pull them up. I'm going to teach you how to be amazing weed puller uppers. Is that, that's, that's a word. That'll work, that works? <laughs> Okay, okay, okay. I'm, I'm, we're going to teach you. We're going to teach you. So, so when, when you see those things happening, listen, many churches rise and fall because they did not do a good enough job pulling up the weeds. They didn't do a good enough job pulling up the weeds. And many churches never pass, never pass the 200 threshold or the 500 threshold or the 1,000 threshold. They never pass those thresholds because they did not do uh, uh, a good enough job self-policing. Policing themselves, adjusting their own lives, making sure that making sure that we don't become weed people, that we're that we're plants, because because God said that 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 you are connected to His vine. He calls us weeds. We're plants, and we're supposed to grow um, as great plants. We're supposed to produce fruit. All right, um, Numbers chapter sixteen, real quick. Numbers chapter sixteen. So we've got the Absalom spirit, who's supposed to have been his father's peace, but wind up being um, his. Wound up making war with his father. Um, go to Numbers chapter 16. Just doing a quick recap. Numbers chapter 16, verses 1 through 4, says, Korah, the son of Izar, the son of Kohath, the son of Levi, and certain Reubenites, Dathan and Ibrahim, sons of Eliab and sons of Pilate, became insolent and rose up against Moses, with them were 250 Israelite men, well, everybody say well-known community leaders, who had been appointed members of the council. They came as a group to oppose Moses and Aaron, and they said, you've gone too far. The whole, com- the whole community is holy. We are holy, every one of them, and the Lord is with them. Why then do you set yourselves above the Lord's assembly? Moses fell on his face. Moses heard this, he fell on his face. Now, the Korah spirit, the Korah spirit is different. The Korah spirit is different than the Absalom spirit. The Korah spirit says things like this, I don't know who he thinks he is. That's the Korah spirit. I don't know who he thinks he is. I don't know what caused, what made him make that change. What made him, what made him do that? What made her do that? That's the Korah spirit. Um, um, he's just a man like everybody else. He's just a man, you know, she's human. She put it, they put their pants on one leg at a time, just like we all do. Um, 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 uh, he's, he's no better. He's no better than we are. He makes mistakes just like everybody else. So watch this. So the Absalom spirit exalts itself, but the Korah spirit tries to abase the leader. The Absalom spirit lifts itself up. The Korah spirit tries to bring the leader down by talking about the leader's flaws, talking about the leader's missteps. Now, now, let me say this to you guys, um, and I want y'all to hear this, and I want y'all to hear this. I want you to hear this. Hear this in the Spirit. Hear this in the Spirit. That whenever God shows you your leader's flaws, it's never about the leader. It's about your heart. Let me say that again. Whenever God shows you the faults of your leader, it's never about the leader. It's always about your heart. God is showing you your heart. Remember when, remember when Noah got drunk? Noah had been through some stuff. Noah saw a whole world of people get slaughtered, drowned to death. That had to be crazy. He heard, he heard the people knocking on the boat and the people, he just heard, he just, he just went through a lot. Noah planted a vineyard, planted a vineyard, and uh, he got drunk on some of the, some of the fermented, fermented juice that he had drank. He fell there in his tent. His youngest son came in, saw him. Uh, the Bible is not real clear about what happened, but whatever the son did, he dishonored the father. But then the, uh, he goes, he, he, he dishonors Noah. He goes, he, he's laughing about his dad. He goes, tells his brothers, you know, what had just happened. His brothers then came, and instead of them looking into the tent, seeing their father's nakedness, you know what they did? You know what they did? You know how they did it? They put a sheet on their shoulders. I'm going to hold a piece. He's going to hold a piece. And they walked in backwards to the father's tent. They walked in backwards. When they got into the tent, they took the sheet off and they threw it backwards over their dad to cover his nakedness. 
when Noah, when Noah woke up, he learned what happened. The Bible says that Noah cursed his youngest son. As a matter of fact, he cursed his youngest son's son, if you read the story. And he blessed the other two. So, so although they could have exposed his flaws, they chose to cover it. Here's my question. Here's my question. Are you covering your leader's flaws, or are you the one just keep exposing it? So whenever you hear that, whenever you hear that, you got to know that that's a core of spirit that's rising up. Let me, let me ask you this. Let me ask you this, because I see it all the time, and people, don't, and people are not fearful anymore. They're, people are people not afraid of the Lord like they used to. They're not afraid of the Lord. How, how many of you have ever, heard, have ever heard somebody tell you, heard on the news or heard on television, social media, you, you've heard somebody, somebody uh, uh, share some very hurtful, very bad information about a spiritual leader, a pastor? Maybe a, maybe a famous pastor, famous preacher. You hear him sharing that and spreading that stuff. Listen, that's the wrong spirit. That's the wrong spirit. Now, now listen, um, um, I'm not saying that, that pastors or are, are, are leaders are perfect because they're not. We're not. None of us are. I'm not saying they're perfect. I'm not saying that they're, they're, they, they, are, they are, should be held in such an area where you can't say anything to them. That, 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 that's the, that's, that goes against Scripture. But I'm going to teach you how to do that. I'm going to teach you how to confront things that, that you see that, that might be wrong. That way you keep the right spirit about it. Keep the right spirit. Okay. All right. So, so Korah gets these leadership people. He gets these well-known community leaders to go against Moses. And he tells Moses, Moses, all of us are holy. What makes you think you're better than we are? He's trying to abase the leader. Now, um, the Korah spirit works through the leaders. The Absalom spirit exalts itself. The Korah spirit debases the leader, tries to bring dishonor on the leadership. Now, again, I don't, I don't want you just to think about this as it pertains to church, but I want you to think about it as it pertains to your job because you got leaders on your job. you got people all around you all the time. That same spirit is active, alive, and well, not just in the church, but everywhere there's leadership because those are spirits are in opposition against leadership. That's why I told teachers, be careful how you talk about, talk about your principal, the superintendent. Be careful about that. You know, if, if, you're, if, you're, if you're a wife, be careful how you talk about your husband. That's still the man of God that God placed in your life. Be careful how you do that. That there's a way to do that that keeps you in good grace with God, and there's a way that you do that that puts you out of grace with God. If you're, if you're a husband, be careful how you talk about your wife. Be careful how you talk about each other. Because um, the Bible says that, that our tongue is filled with poison, deadly poison. And it's a, it says our, our, our tongue starts a fire, an inferno, and it says, you know, who can tame it? Who can tame the tongue? So we've got to set guards at our mouth and be mindful of the things that we say, because, and we've got to check that spirit within ourselves. All right, uh, 1 Kings chapter 18. What's the first spirit we talked about? What's the second spirit? Korah. Okay, now let's go to 1 Kings chapter 18. 1 Kings chapter 18. I'm going to teach you all how to use this Bible before it's all over with. First Kings chapter 18. Y'all, we have real Bible study. I don't just talk, I don't just get up here just talking things that out of the top of my head. And I've heard people do that, read the scripture, don't talk about anything that has anything to do with the scripture. But that's why I, t- I tell you to bring your note. You should have a Bible study notebook, something that you're jotting down notes in, because it really helps when you're on your personal, your personal time, the time that you go and you sit down and you study and you read the Bible for yourself. It really helps. Um, First Kings chapter number 18. Look at verse number 14. Excuse me, the verse number 4, I'm sorry. 1 Kings chapter 18, verse number 4. For, it, for so it was when Jezebel massacred the prophets of the Lord that Obadiah had taken 100 prophets and hidden them, 50 to a cave, and, fled, and fed them with bread and water. Now go to chapter number 19, 1 Kings chapter number 19. Look at verse number 1. And Ahab told Jezebel all that Elijah had done, and how he had executed all the prophets with the sword. Then Jezebel sent a messenger to Elijah saying, So let the gods do to me, and more so, if I do not make your life as the life of one of them by tomorrow about this time. And when he had saw that, he arose and ran for his life and went to Beersheba, which belongs to Judah, and left the servants 
there. He left them alone. Now, let's talk about Jezebel, the characteristics of Jezebel, because sometimes people get a little bit confused about when we talk about the Jezebel spirit. Um, I, matter of fact, a few months, well, a few years ago, I think, uh, I did a whole teaching on the Jezebel spirit. All right. Uh, number one, obsessive passion for domineering and controlling others. Be careful of people who get mad at you when you don't do for them what they told you to do or what they asked you to do or what they suggested that you should do. Amen? Be mindful of people trying to control you. People say, well, why didn't you call me back? And then, listen, let me say it like this. Let me say it like this. Be, be, be mindful of people, listen to this, who are passive-aggressive. Now, if that's part of, part of your MO, it's part of how you act, then you got to fix that. If, if you're the type of person when somebody makes you mad or somebody doesn't do what you think they should do, that you start acting funny toward them. That's not the will of God. That's not right. I'm, I'm not saying that you have to go out to lunch with the people. I'm just saying that you've got to keep, you've got to keep that, play, that person right in your heart. Because if he says that we have to love our enemies... The person that did you wrong, I mean, the person that uh, disappointed you is not your enemy. You still have to love them. Y'all picking up what I'm putting down? So what am I saying to you? I'm saying to you that you should be at a place in your Christian maturity that everything, every little thing doesn't, doesn't offend you anymore. Because it's going to happen. As long as there's people in the world, as long as you have to deal with people, we're going to have to deal with offenses. But you've got you to grow up and you've got to be at a space, in a place of spiritual maturity where everything does no longer offends you. Everything doesn't bother you anymore. Because you know what? You learn how to go pray for people. You learn how to give people grace because you need grace. Y'all hearing this? And so you learn not to have a judgmental spirit. You learn to operate in the spirit of grace. And that's what I'm saying to you. As we grow and matriculate, as a church grows, we have to learn how to operate in grace. Because there are going to be people that come in. Watch this. There are going to be people that, that, there are gonna be people that, are, that are come in that, that may not be of this fold. And we're going to let the wheat and tear grow together. And we've got to be at a point in our lives where we can handle certain things, we can deal with certain things without letting certain little things offend us and we wind up leaving the church because it offended us. That's better than y'all gave me credit for. <laughs> Stubborn refusal to see and submit to authority or, the, or even the power of God. Stubborn refusal to see and submit to the authority of the living God or power of authority or the power of the living God. And, and you'll hear it. You'll, you'll hear people say, I'm not going to do that. Or, you know, I'm just, I'm just going to do something else. Number three, single-minded determination to have one's own way no matter who is destroyed in the process. That's Jezebel characteristic. They don't care who they destroy. They'll say anything. They'll say it within earshot of anyone. They don't care who hear them gossiping and talking about other people. They don't care about it. They'll just, they'll just say it. They'll just, they'll just, they just say stuff. How many of you ever heard somebody just say stuff and you try to make them be quiet? And like, you shouldn't. I raise your hand if you heard somebody that's just saying stuff. Like, what do you what are you doing? You can't just be saying that. Just saying stuff all willy-nilly. Yeah, you, you, can't, you can't do that. You can't do that. Because you know what? That person, that person, they don't care who they hurt. They, they, they don't care. They don't care if they're, you know, somebody hears it, that's a relative of that person. They just, they don't care. Uh, refusal to repent. Especially sexual immorality or even teaching false things. They just don't repent. It's a spirit that, that, that will commit a sexual sin and just don't feel bad about it. That's what Jezebel was. Commit a sexual sin and she just, she just didn't feel bad about it. Refusal to repent. Even, even willingness to cause physical harm to leadership. Because that's who Jezebel was. She was a bully. Be careful of people who try to bully you. Do y'all know that there are some bullies in the church? Now, now listen, can, can I be honest? Even, there are some pastors who are bullies. It's okay to say, yeah, but I won't be offended. There are, there are some pastors who are bullies. There are pastors who try to bully the people and try to make people feel like you can't say anything to them. They try to exalt themselves and make themselves some, some big whatever. And that's, that's, not, that's not the will of God. That's not God's will. It's not God's will. Pastors are servant leaders. And, our, and the anointing that's on a pastor's life comes from God. It doesn't come from ourselves. It comes from him. It comes from him. Amen. Um, here's the Jezebel spirit. I know what he said, but I'm going to do it my way. I was wrong, but I don't care. Woo, Lord Jesus. Listen, let's be honest. Y'all be honest with your boy. How many of you ever heard somebody say, I was wrong, but I don't care? How many of you ever heard somebody say that? Woo, somebody in the backhand went up real quick. I know I was wrong, but they shouldn't have did what they did. 
Whoa, ouch. You know you're wrong? Wow. Man. How about I wish they would? Sister Hollis, you're laughing a little bit, a little bit too much. <laughs> but, but you hear that about you hear that concerning leadership of people in authority, people in leadership. Uh, what do they say? Well, they say I want I, I wanted to hurt him. I've heard people say this about their own pastors. Lord have mercy, is right. Or even if you're not careful, if you're not careful, um, um, that spirit becomes seductive. It's the same spirit. The spirit becomes seductive. And if he or she wasn't married, it becomes seductive. And you have to be, you have to be mindful of that. And we got, we got to be able to, we got to be able to, when we see that, notice that we got to be able to pull that up. Okay, all right, let's rock. Let's rock. Um, uh, listen to this. So honor, honor men and women of God and leave them alone. That's why you guys, so you, many of you, been, you've been listening to me for 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, almost 13 years. Almost 13 years. You've been listening to me teach and preach for over 13 years, and uh, you will not and have not heard me bash pastors and preachers. You never heard me call another preacher's name from the pulpit and, and say something derogatory to them. You know why? Because I understand what the Bible says. If that's God's man, man, I'm leaving him alone. I, I, listen, that's between him and the Lord. And that's between her and the Lord. That's between them. I, I don't, I, you know, people, you know, they fight women preachers. They fight this and fight that. Listen, I've just learned. I'm going to stay in my lane. I'm going to do what God called me to do. Does that make sense? I'm going to do what God calls me to do. So honor men and women of God, leave them alone. Listen, um, go to Acts chapter 5 real quick. Acts chapter 5. Go to Acts chapter 5. Camera crew, y'all doing an amazing job. Acts chapter 5. Let me show you all this. Acts chapter 5. Here's what I understand. What page is Acts chapter 5 on? <laughs> oh, thank you. You're absolutely right. Acts chapter 5, look at verse number 38. Look at verse number 38. Uh, 38 and 39. Read it from your Bible. Read it from your Bible. I don't want y'all to read it loud from whatever, whatever uh, Bible you have. Read it loud. So Acts chapter 5, verse 38 and 39. One, two, ready to read. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Uh huh. Wow. Okay. So, so what is that saying? Y'all tell me what is that saying? What is it saying? And I want you to go back and read it in context because they were trying to take the men of God and throw them in prison and beat them up and all. They were going to kill them, and then somebody came along and they said, "Look, man. Every time we put them in prison, the angel come get them out." Like. Don't kill these dudes. Like, leave them alone because <laughs> if it's not of God, it's, it's not going to work. It's going to come to nothing. But if it's of the Lord, you're not going to be able to stop it. So you know what? He said, man, leave those guys alone. Leave them alone. That's my philosophy. I leave them alone. I don't fight leadership. I leave them alone because, because you know what? Because those persons got to answer to the Lord. Gotta, my job is to pray for them. If I'm serving, if I'm serving, uh, you know, Being a good servant is part of the recipe of being a good leader. You got to know how to serve. You got to know how to serve. You know how to serve, you can be a good leader. Okay, but the Bible says leave them alone because if it's of the Lord, you can't stop it, and you're going to wind up fighting against God. And you don't want to fight against God because God got a pretty good record. <laughs> you know, God's never lost a battle. I just went old school on y'all just then. <laughs> okay. All right. If it's of God, leave them alone. You keep your mouth off of them. Don't talk about them. Don't give them some weird names and all that. Just don't do it. Don't talk about them as we grow and matriculate. Um, and that's important. It's important because, because uh, if, if Satan is going to overthrow a church, he try. What's the best way to kill a snake? Get his head off, right? Right, right. And so what's the best way to kill a church? Take off the head. Well, who's the head? Me. Now, y'all job is to help protect me. Did y'all know that? 
That, that's your job. No, I'll show it to you in Scripture. That's your job. Your job is to make sure that something or somebody don't come in trying to destroy me. My job is to protect you. How do I protect you? I pray for you. I have, I have to live a godly life so that, so that the grace and the anointing of God continues to stay in the ministry, stay connected. We have a responsibility to each other. So, in other words, in other words, as we continue to grow and elevate, you know, can, can you imagine all of the shots that personalities like T.D. Jakes, personalities like uh, Creflo Dollar, and I'm just using those names just to give you, the, you, you know, you know the attack, the level of attack that those guys have in the media? They get slaughtered in the media, but their church continue to grow. You know why? Because they are great weed puller uppers. <laughs> and I, I, I'll, I'll, sh I'll show you. I'll show you a little bit about that. Okay, now, now, Pastor Love, why should we be so? Why should we? Why should we honor this? And why should we? Why should we be mindful that we don't let these spirits get in us? Why should I guard my heart? Why should I guard my mouth? Why should I guard my mouth? Why should I guard my heart? Why should I tune my ear and be sensitive when I hear these spirits rising up around me and people around me? Why? Let me ask y'all this. Let me ask y'all this. Have, have you ever... What is... What is like an easy way to die? Give me an easy way to die. In your sleep. Yeah, just... And then... Check out. Check out time. That's it. That's all. That's easy. Give me another easy way. That's another easy way to die. Give me another easy way to die. I heard in your sleep. Say, say what? Fall? Just fall? <laughs> like, oh, snap. Bam. Bam. We did. Wake up in heaven. Like, man, what happened? I just, I just fell. Okay. So, so, so sleep or fall. Okay. Now, now listen. Now listen. Now check this out. When I, when I studied these three spirits, I studied how these three people died. I studied how they died. When you see, don't look, don't be Googling. When you see how they died, you're going to say, oh, my goodness. When you see how these three people died, you're going to realize that there's something different about their death. These three people, they didn't die a natural death. Their deaths were stupid. Their deaths, listen to this, their deaths were ordained by God because of, the, uh, because of, of, of how treacherous their behavior was. You know God killed people? You don't believe me? Ask Hophni and Phineas. Will God kill you? Many people, listen, let me tell you something. Let me tell you something. Um, there are so many people who are dying today, and they die weird deaths, and we never ask the question, I wonder if God did that. We're so busy mourning the loss that we don't go before God and say, God, that was the way they died. But that was, Lord, was that, was that, is there someone I'm supposed to know? Someone, let's, go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go, let's go. Let's go. go to 2 Samuel chapter 18. I'm going to show you all. I'm going to show you how they died. 2 Samuel chapter 18. When I show you how they died, then you're going to be like, wow, okay, that was different. 2 Samuel chapter 18. Let's go there. Second Samuel chapter number 18. Look at verse number, look at verse number 9. This is going to trip you all out. This is going to trip you out. <laughs> the way Absalom died. Are y'all there? Y'all, you, you read it? Y'all read it? Read it. Read it. I'm not even going to tell the online audience. Online audience, you got to read for yourself. Get your Bible and read it for yourself. Okay, y'all read it. How did Absalom, y'all tell me, how did Absalom, read it. How did Absalom die? Wait a minute, what? He didn't die from the head injury. This dude is riding on a donkey. He's riding on a mule. And this dude's head 
got stuck in a tree. How you how you let your head get stuck? Was he texting and riding? <laughs> how did you not see the tree? His head. One translation said that his hair. Really? One translation said that his hair got stuck in the tree. This dude, and the Bible says that he was suspended between heaven and the earth. His mule is gone. The mule started running. He stuck. Have any of you ever rode a mule and got your head stuck in a tree? <laughs> How do you get your head stuck in a tree where you're suspended between heaven and the earth? Look at verse number 14. Look at verse, y'all looking at 14? Read verse number 14. What happened? What did Joab do? Why he was yet alive. What a, listen, no, no, this is so crazy. This is so crazy. Absalom was stuck in a tree. One of the guards see Absalom and like, man, that's crazy. Goes and tells Joab, Joab, you're not going to believe this. <laughs> the mighty great warrior, his head stuck in a tree. Joab said, his head stuck in a tree? He said, yeah. He said, what would you do? He said, I didn't do anything. I was tripping. Joab decides, I'm not going to wait. He says, I'm going to go. He goes, why the man hanging in the tree? I can imagine Joe walking up and saying, man, ain't this something? Ain't this something? He hanging in this tree. <laughs> he takes three javelins, you about may say darts, and thrusts them through the man's heart while he's hanging in the tree. This is the same guy that people love. The same guy that won the affection of won the hearts of all these people had this whole army behind him. But God used a tree to take him out. Do you know that that's the exact same thing that Jesus did on Calvary? Jesus used a tree to destroy your enemy. Some of y'all going to get that on the way to the house. Now, who was Abs what was Absalom's spirit yelling out? Absalom's spirit? Come on, I got 10 minutes. Let's go. Exalt himself. I can do it better. All right. Now, how did Absalom die? What? <laughs> Head caught in a tree. How you Wait a minute. Don't, if you know the answer, don't you say a word. How did he Korah die? If you don't answer, don't say, a, don't say a word. How do you think Korah died? How do you think he died? Absalom gets stuck in a tree. <laughs> I'm a duck next time I ride a horse. I'm going to be ducking down. How do you think Korah died? And just give me a guess. Anybody want to guess? Huh? Say what? He drowned. Okay, I heard somebody say he drowned. Fell out a window. He was swallowed by what? He was swallowed by the earth. Okay. He got choked. What? Got choked to death. <laughs> wow. What Bible y'all read? Okay. Go to Numbers chapter 16. <laughs> 
Go to Numbers chapter 16. Let's look at this. Man, I wish I had more time, y'all. That hour goes by so fast. Numbers chapter 16. Um, look at verse number 28. Number 16, 28. Y'all there? Say, man, if you're there. I'm, I'm going to read New King James Version. It says, Then Moses said, By this you shall know that the Lord has sent me to do all these works. In other words, y'all came against me. I'm going to show you that this is the Lord. For I have not done them of my own will. If these men die naturally, like all men, or if they are visited by a common fate of all men, then the Lord has not sent me. In other words, if these die, if they die by drowning, if somebody choke them to death, uh, somebody else says something, if they die regular death, it wasn't the Lord. God didn't send me. Now listen to this. Look at verse number 30. But the Lord creates a new thing in the earth, and the earth opens its mouth and swallows them up with all that belongs to them, and they go down alive into the pit. Then you will understand that these men have rejected the Lord. Look at verse 31. Now it came to pass, as he finished speaking all these words, that what happened? That, that, wait a minute. So, so he's talking, and all of a sudden, the ground just, the ground like Pac-Man. The ground opens his mouth. And what happened? And swallowed them up. Who else? All their household. All the men with Korah. And all, all their pots and pans got ate up. How you going to eat up the man pots and pans? The ground ate up everything that belonged to him. All the people that were with him. Can you imagine? People start running. And right where you step, the mouth of the, the mouth open up and you step right into the ground mouth. Where can you run from a, to run away from the ground's mouth? This thing that ate up your house, your whole house under the ground. Just one swallow, your whole house gone. All the people, and, swore, and then watch this, closed up in his place. Wiped the remembrance of them off the face of the earth. Now, wait a minute. What spirit was that? And what was the core of spirit? Tell me. Say what? Bringing down the leader? What'd you say? Talking trash about the leader? Dishonor? Trying to debase the leader, trying to make bring the leader down into everybody's eyes. Well, you know, he ain't all that, they ain't all that. You know, be careful. These people didn't die regular deaths. The way they died was stupid. It was ridiculous the way they died. Moses said, if you die a regular death, then God has not sent me. But if God does a new thing and opens up the earth and swallow you and all your family, and everybody, listen, listen. The, when when the, when the ground opened up, it did not just swallow Korah. That's why you got to be careful. You got to be careful who you're listening to. Be careful who you're running with. Be careful who's in your ear. Be careful about that. It didn't just swallow Korah. It swallowed everybody that was with him. So there are some people, when they come to you saying things, you've got to make a, you got to draw a line of demarcation. Say, you know, I hear what you're saying, but I'm not with that. I hear what you're saying, but that's the wrong spirit. And you guys have to be good at that. Why? Because you don't want the ground to open up. In other words, you don't want to die like, you don't want to die death like this. A dishonorable death. One of the worst things you can happen in the military is uh, if you're in the military, you serve all your service, you get a dishonorable discharge. That means you don't get any other benefits because you got dishonorable discharge. You don't want to come to church and work all these years and then be dishonorably discharged from the faith to die a dishonorable death because you didn't do a good enough job protecting yourself, protecting the ministry from these spirits that sometimes try to creep in. Okay, all right, all right, all right, all right. Raise your hand if you know how Jezebel died. Raise your hand if you know how Jezebel died. A few people. Raise your hand high. Y'all like y'all scared. I ain't going to call on you. One, two, three, four. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine. Okay, 10, 11, 11 foot. Now I'm counting. Now y'all popping your hand up. 13. Okay, all right. Okay, tell me how Jezebel died. <laughs> okay, 14. <laughs> no, y'all not. Okay, you know how Jezebel died. I'm telling y'all, man. Okay, I got, listen, I, oh, I wish I had more time. Go to 2 Kings. Let's go look at it. Go to 2 Kings. Let's see how Jezebel died. <laughs> Boy, 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 boy. Woo! Second Kings chapter 9. Second Kings chapter 9. Verse number 30. This, y'all. Y'all better leave people alone. Y'all hear me? <laughs> I'm not joking, man. It's the same God. God doesn't change. He's the same God yesterday, today, and forever. He's the same God. Same God. Y'all in 2 Kings chapter 9? Some of y'all are reading. Boy, them eyes are gone. Y'all are reading. <laughs> That's okay. That's okay. Okay, y'all there? All right, New King James Version. It says, now when Jehu had come to Jezreel, uh, Jezebel heard of it, and she put paint on her eyes, adorned her head, and looked through a window. Then as Jehu entered uh, the gate, she said, it is peace, Zimri. Zimri murdered uh, murderer of your master. And he looked up at the window and said, who is on my side? Who? So two or three eunuchs looked out at him and they said, and he said to them, throw her down. <laughs> she just got all dolled up, all got that paint on her face. She was being cute up in the window. So... <laughs> These dudes then threw this woman <laughs> and throw this woman out of a two-story building. And what happened? Some of her blood splattered on the wall and on the horses. And he trampled her. So when she hit the ground, he took his horse. And he put the horse on, and the horse on top of her, and the horse trampled the woman in her good makeup. <laughs> she had a <laughs> she had a mac on. <laughs> she had her good clothes on, laying on the ground, and his horse beating her. Wow. And when they had gone in, he ate and drunk. Then he said, he said, go now to see this accused woman and bury her. For at least she, she is a king's daughter. So they went to bury her, but they found no more of her. <laughs> what? Where'd she go? Where did she go? The horse just beat her to death. They said, let's go bury her. They went inside, got their drink on. Hey, man, you know what I'm saying? Hey, man. Man, man look, she is a king daughter, fam. You know what I'm saying? Like, let's at least go bury her. I bet. Yeah, you're right, man. Let's just go bury her. They walked outside looking for her. That joker was gone. All they saw was a skull. They'd only been in maybe an hour or so. They come outside, they saw a skull at her feet. Y'all realize how gross that is now. And the palm of her hands. A skull. Her feet. <laughs> they had to dig the hole very, I should have said that. My bad. This is the word of the Lord, which he spoke by a servant Elijah to teach by saying, on this plot of ground at Jezreel, dogs shall eat the flesh of Jezebel, and the corpse of Jezebel shall be as refuge on the surface of a field. In that plot at Jezreel, so that they shall not say, here lies Jezebel. Okay, 
Who was Absalom? Tell me about the, tell me about the Absalom spirit. Tell me about it. Exalts itself. Works through the people. What's the next spirit? Quarrel with spirit. Tell me about it. Works. Say, say what? Brings the leader down. Bring dishonor. Tries to dishonor the leader. And what's the last one? Tell me about Jezebel. She what? She's controlling others. Obsessive compulsive. Sensuality. All that. Now, wait a minute. How did Absalom die? What? The tree gave the tree guy. <laughs> he got caught in the head, got caught in the tree. All right. He got, he, and wind up getting speared to death. What was the second spirit? Quarrel, how did Quarrel die? The ground opened up, swallowed him up. What was the last spirit? Jezebel. Jezebel. Now, now, how did Jezebel die? What? <laughs> she said a lot of ways. <laughs> She said a lot. He died. She died a lot of ways. That's not funny. I don't know why y'all laughing. Okay. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. So so. Okay. So so here's 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 my here's my point. Here's my point. You gotta know. That's why you can't entertain those spirits. Those spirits are still alive and active in the earth. If we're not careful, they'll be active in the church. Okay, here's how you deal with it. Here's what I deal, here's what I deal with it. Okay, I, I'm almost out of time. Good gracious of life. Number one, number one, here's how you deal with it. Number one, number one, number one. Put it up there, Jerry. Here you go. Number one. Read that. Y'all read that. Which one are you most likely to possess? Here's a moment of transparency for me. I am most likely to possess the Absalom spirit. I'm not saying that I have it. But I, as I look back over my life in Christian maturity, I can see times in my life when I, when I would say, I can do that better than that. I would have done that different. I can see times in my life when I'm serving under a leader and I question the things that my leader was doing. And I didn't question it to them. I questioned it to other people. So you know what? I have to be on guard about that. That's why I don't talk about leaders anymore. I don't do it. Because I know that that's kind of a propensity for me. Especially when I think I can do something as good, if not better, than another person is doing that exact same thing. That I feel like I can do well. And I have to be careful about that. I'm more mature now, so I'm, I'm aware of it. And I've dealt with that spirit in myself. Now, can you be that transparent? Can you be that honest? And identify, which one are you most likely? Are you a fighter like Jezebel? Are you a bully? People can't tell you anything? Or maybe you're like Cora. You want to start with the top. You want to debase the leader. Maybe that's you. Maybe, maybe, maybe you find out a leader's flaw and you just take that leader's flaw and you just hold it over their head. Maybe you can't see them the same because, because of their flaws, because you know their faults. You can't see them the same. And you forget that you've got just as many flaws, if not more. Which one are you most likely? To possess. If you're going to be, if you're going to pull up weeds, you got to start with the weeds in your own life. You got to start with the weeds that's in your own heart. Can you be honest? Here's what I want you to do. Whatever one, don't, don't show your neighbor, don't show the person beside you, the right or to the left, don't show them. I want you just to write down what spirit you're most likely to possess. Or maybe what spirit that you used to possess. Maybe you're in this place right now and you say, man, you know what? I, I see that in me today. I see that now. I see that in me. Now, if you're here and you say you're perfect, then you're in the wrong place. Because all of us have a propensity, a proclivity to either operate in it consistently or we've operated in one or the other in our past. Let me ask you this. Does sexual sin bother you? Can you not be married and have sex and it don't bother you? 
and you'll still come to church and work like nothing ever, like nothing's wrong. You never repent from it. You just do it. That's the wrong spirit. Can you be open and honest with yourself about what spirit that is? Number two, repent. Learn the mind of Christ. Repent. I've had to go back and repent. Repent and learn the mind of Christ. What's the mind of Christ? i got to think the way God thinks. Yeah, let, me, let me say this to you, and I need to say this publicly for those of you in this room and those of you who are watching. Never allow someone else's opinion of someone to change your opinion of them. Don't be scared. You can clap. It's okay. Because people are going to come. Listen, what, here's what I've learned. I've learned to say, I've learned to say it within myself. That's your experience with that person. That has been my experience with them. Y'all hearing that? And I'm not going to let somebody else's experience with a person cause me to change the way I the way I view that person. I'm going. I give everybody a clean slate. You got a clean slate with me. I put a ten on everybody's forehead. Everybody's special. I put a ten on everybody's forehead. Everybody's special. I'm going to treat everybody the same. I'm going to do my best to treat everybody the same. And that's kind of that's kind of way I live, and that's the way you should live. Just because somebody says something, you start looking at them funny. No, no, no. Would you want somebody looking at you funny? Of something that somebody else said? Maybe y'all got beef. That don't mean I've got to have beef with that person. Maybe it's something that you did to them that made them to respond the way that they responded to you. Don't ever do that. If that's not your experience, don't, don't let it be your experience. As a matter of fact, as a matter of fact, the, the Bible says, the Bible says, don't even, don't even accept. As a matter of fact, go, to, go there, First Timothy chapter 5. Y'all, I'm, 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 I'm over time, y'all. Sorry, praise and worship team. I'll, I'll do something special for y'all. I need to show them this. If y'all just bear with me just for one moment. First Timothy. First, it, it, that, that's, that's, it's not in the notes. First Timothy chapter number five. First Timothy chapter number five. It's not, it's not in the notes. Are y'all there? First Timothy chapter five, are y'all there? Okay, L- look at verse number 17. Look at verse number 17. It says, let the elders who rule well be counted worthy of double honor, especially those who labor in word and doctrine or word um, and the study and the preaching of God's word. Now look at verse number 19. What does it say? Don't even receive an accusation of an elder except why? Two or three witnesses. So, so see, God knew that spiritual leaders were going to come under attack. And he set this design to protect the spiritual leader, to protect him from fraud and lies and all those things. He says, somebody come to you, listen, don't even accept it. Don't accept an accusation unless you've got two or three other witnesses. Don't, don't even accept that. Now, I'm not saying that leaders are perfect. And so, again, I want you to understand that. I, I'm not saying protect them in his mess. I'm not saying that. I'm saying you've got to be, be protected from all the lies and the onslaught of the enemy that's going to come, especially as our church continues to grow. You've got to be prepared for that. You've got to know that. And guess what? It's not just me. It's you, too. It's you as a leader. Some of you, some of you came to this church, and the people at your church start talking about you behind your back. Somebody said, "Yeah, they did." <laughs> but it starts, and you guys need to know that. You guys need to know that. Okay, so so repent, learn the mind of Christ. What's the mind of Christ? Well, I got to think the way God thinks about this person. Think the way God thinks about this situation. I've got to see this the way God sees it. Okay, number three, number three, number three. Here's a big one. Here's a big one. When you hear something, say something. When you hear something, say something. It's okay to say to that person. And here, here's, what, here's what I say. I tell people all the time, well, you know what? That's not the right spirit. I hear what you're saying, but that, that's not the right, that's not the spirit of this house. That's not the spirit of this ministry. I'm sorry, that's not the right spirit. And it's okay to say that. That's not the right spirit. That's not the spirit of this house. That's, that's not the right spirit. It's not the right spirit. Listen, if, if, if you get mad because I go over a little bit in Bible study, that's not the right spirit. Let me say it again. If you get mad because I go over a little bit in Bible study, that's not the right spirit. That's not the spirit of this house. That's not the right spirit. And so you got to have the right spirit. And if somebody bickers about that, you got to go back to, you know, I hear what you're saying, but that's not the right spirit. Because, because, because sometimes we go over a little bit in, in, in our worship service. If you bicker about that, that's not the right spirit. 
You got to let, let God be God. You got to let the Holy Spirit do what the Holy Spirit is doing. And you got to let God be God. And you got to have the right spirit about that. Got to have the right spirit so that our ministry can grow to the next level. So we can keep being the light in the world. So it's okay to say to a person, I hear what you're saying. I appreciate you telling me that. Hey, did, did you know, did you know, did you know that, 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 that gossip stops the moment it hits a wise person's ears? That when gossip hits the ears of a wise person, it stops right there. And you tell that person, listen, don't tell anybody else that. Don't, don't utter those words again. Don't say that because that's not the right spirit. That's not the heart of this ministry. That's not the heart of our pastor. That's not his heart. That's not his heart. And it's okay to say that. And lastly, pray with and or for that person. Pray with and or for that person. Whoever that person is, don't let them leave your presence. Listen, while you're there, say, can we pray real quick? Can we pray? Now, pray for them. Pray for the person that they're talking about. If you want to know, so, and I'll say this in closing. I know I'm over time, so I apologize for that. Um, let me say this in closing. I'm not trying to suggest that leadership is above reproach because leadership nowhere is and neither should they be. But there's a way that you bring an issue to your leader. If you feel like your leader's in sin, you feel like he made a misstep, feel like he miscalculated something, in Matthew chapter 18, isn't it, it tells you, it teaches you how to deal with that. Teach you how to deal with someone who's sinning or somebody who's off track. Number one, what does it say? Y'all remember Matthew number, chapter 18? What's the first thing you're supposed to do? You're supposed to go to them. You go to that person one-on-one. You feel like leadership is in error? Don't go telling everybody. Because now you're wrong. Now you're operating in the wrong spirit. You go to that person. You go talk to them. And if they don't hear you and they're still in sin, what's the second thing that you do? That's right. You take somebody with you next time. And you get some witnesses. Take some witnesses with you. To go back and you look, you look at that same issue. And listen, if they don't listen to those two, what's the third thing the Bible says? Tell it to the church. Tell it to the church. And I'm not saying these things consecutive. I'm not saying these things one day, next day, next day. I'm not talking about that. As you, you prayerfully give that person time to repent and prayerfully give them time to turn around and come back. Does that make sense? And that goes with everybody. Now, listen, now I, 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 need, I need to tell you this. The Bible says that if you have an elder or a leader in the church who's sinning publicly, the Bible says rebuke them publicly. So that everybody else will fear and they won't do that same thing. Now, the church hadn't practiced that well. But there may, be, there may, there may come a time when we have to do that. Because as our church grows, I have to become a different leader. I have to lead from a different level as we continue to grow, as we continue to matriculate. I've got to be more defined as a leader, and God is doing that. You've got to become more defined as a people. You've got to become stronger as a people. Because right now, we're in the hundreds. But what happens when we're in the thousands? And you've got thousands of people coming to the ministry. What happens then? We have to be strong. And we have to be well-defined as a people. If not, it's going to be very difficult to make it. So God is calling us to deal with these three spirits. Now, uh, again, thank you for jotting down whatever spirit that you have the proclivity to, to operate in. Now it's time for you to pray about that and be on guard. Put a guard in yourself. Let's pray. Father, we thank you so much for this wonderful opportunity that you've given us. God, we know that we're on the brink of something amazing. God, you've already done, you've already done great things here. But God, we...